Welcome to the show, Daniel. Good to be here. Yeah. Daniel's the man behind the scenes, so all the videos, all the sort of technical side of it, Daniel takes care of it. Like Without him, I don't think the, the podcast would be where it is today. Like, big ups on my man, Daniel. So if you want to hit him up with anything, this guy's the man to ask. But yeah, 12, uh, 12 months later, yeah, 14, 14 yeah. episodes. It's been pretty fun. What do you reckon? Nah, it's been, a, it's been a journey um, from like, you know, your crappy Photoshop to... Uh, <laughs> episodes with no video to, to now we've i think we've come quite far yeah nah it's been pretty cool like like honestly like every time you sit down with one of these guys and you listen to their stories and you listen to you know how they became who they they are right now it's like so cool and motivating like mm. you could actually like feel it you're like fuck like man i just stopped being fucking lazy and i like, <laughs> get off my ass like honestly yeah. like some of the people like now are doing extremely well mm. And I think that's like the the main like focus of the podcast is to, you know, not necessarily to envy other people, but to learn off other people to actually see them as like a source of inspiration and a source of like, fuck, like these guys are doing well. Hmm. How are they doing well? And how can I use the experience yeah. for me to do well as well? Exactly. And fuck, like that's that's been like the major like driving force as to, you know, why I keep doing it, you know? Mm. Yeah. 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 It's all about those perspectives, um, and there's, there's common themes, and then there's not because they're all in their own separate industries. Mm. So you can kind of see threads between them, but and also their kind of context that changes there. Oh, hundred percent. Like the stories are different, but like I don't know. There's like a common trait between them. It's like a lot of these guys are really deep thinkers. Mm. You know, they're conscious thinkers. They they're not reactive to the environment. They're like really proactive. Right. They've made conscious decisions as to how they want to live their lives and they're constantly executing, which is, you know, from my experience, like not the, not the rule. It's like the exception right. of how human beings like, you know, navigate through life. Mm. I think that's a, you know, major, major distinction from what I've learned. Yeah, I guess the, the mindset, right? Yeah. Like these guys are fucking all like super motivated, super onto it. It just makes you like learn. You're like fuck, like man, like there's just so much more to life, like to live, to like do shit. Right. So yeah. So yeah, basically, I'm shooting off to the New York University in Abu Dhabi. So I'll be staying there for four years, and well, we'll still continue the podcast, but it'll probably be the other side of the world. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my plans at the moment. I uh, haven't told a lot of people, keeping it on the low key, but <laughs> now you know then. That's coming out. Yeah. But it should be fun to still, still continue it. Yeah, and you're just getting a whole broader perspective even more. 100%, 100% yeah. So, yes, yeah, widening that mm. perspective again. Mm. Like The goal is not necessarily to, like, you know, get people that are publicly successful, but the people that are doing really interesting things. Like interesting things, like they're solving interesting problems, they're thinking differently, they're constantly like exploring new avenues of study or fields of research, and I think that's that's crucially important to not chase like celebrities, but chase like oh, yeah. people that are, you know, they're the cutting edge, they're at the edge yeah. of their fields, you know. Yeah. The yeah. Because I sort of stem like at the start, like when we first started, I was like. You know, I was always thinking, I was like, oh, how can we get, like, famous people? But to be honest, it isn't, it isn't about the famous people. It's about the people that are mm. really deep thinkers. Because some of these deep thinkers and some of these sort of industry tycoons mm. or icons are not necessarily famous. Sure, exactly. Yeah, so it's a common thing. Like, both the people we've been interviewing and the famous people are both deep thinkers. Mm -hmm. but you don't yeah. necessarily have access right away to the famous people. So uh, you still get those perspectives. Yeah, for sure. Like some, you know, you you know, you ask them. Some of them said yes, and they said no. But it's all good. Um, I don't know. It's always a good opportunity to sit down with them, yeah. to talk. You know, shout out to all the people that have been on the podcast. Like, yeah. giving really, up their time. really appreciate you guys. You know, it's been pretty cool. Like giving up your time to do this. And I think I've maybe you know I've I've received a lot of cool feedback from my friends, from the people that have been listening. They're like saying, you know, that they have learned interesting perspectives of how to do this or how to do that or how to navigate this problem or that problem. That's the whole idea of the pro the whole idea of the podcast. Mm. It's just interviewing really interesting people 
and asking them some cool questions. So, you know, just understanding life from a different perspective. Right. Stepping outside yourself and your own ego per se and just like sort of surrendering to them in the sense of learning from them. Right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what's made it great as well. It's your curiosity towards the people mm. and your genuine kind of interviewing. Yeah. Oh, I, lo- I love that. I, yeah. I, I, I genuinely like think like when I'm there, I want to get the most out of it. And like constantly asking questions. Well, at the start, like one of the first podcasts, I would prepare the questions. Mm. But then I was like, ah, to be honest, like I'd rather like do it off the bat and really just listen to them. Yeah. And based on that, ask those questions. Sure. And I think that for me works a lot better than pre pre packaging the questions. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, you're probably inherently coming into it with like, oh, we could find. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But it's just cool. Like, uh, I think when you're in the, you know, when you're sitting down and talking to them, if you're like, like listening, like these ideas or these questions of ideas come up, you're like, oh what about this then yeah you know based on what they said previously sure yeah you can pivot rather than yeah. being set on yeah, 100%. you learn the art of listening right that's what i found like i've become a far better listener sure. doing the podcast than i was before right yeah before i just talk and you know wouldn't really listen yeah. wouldn't really deeply listen like i i seem like i'm listening but i wouldn't right. really listen but like after this podcast like you learn the art of just being quiet mm taking what they say processing it and then saying it again right active listening. yeah 100 yeah. i think you learn the most in that and it's like the most enjoyable part of it right we're just like sitting down and taking it in really yeah. yeah i mean being a fan of podcasts you know ourselves yeah and that obviously comes into it like 100 yeah like you know one of the reasons like we we sort of at the start we started this podcast was like just getting this message to young people really you know mm. like my friends are all young people most of the people that listen to it are young you know mm. getting these interesting ideas and perspectives to young people yeah. that are in the some say pivotal stages of their life mm. whether they the decision some say this I, I i i'm not sure if i agree with it but some say what the decisions you make right now often determine how your life will turn out Sure. Which is, you know, maybe not fully true, right? But it has some merit to it in, in in terms of like what you learn now and the the way you apply yourself right now, will give you that extra edge. Mm, sets the tone. Or you'll be on the back end. Sure. Do you see what I mean? You yeah. could either take it two ways. Not to say that you can't shift your life oh, in 100%. 10, 15 years, but uh, who we say that like we're still like starting up as well. Yeah, exactly. And well, it like f- researching and like learning from these guys like if they per se didn't make these decisions at a young age that they wanted to live their life a certain way or their younger self mm. they wouldn't be who they were because those decisions they made the constant conscious ones yeah and not necessarily say like you have to make it all when you're young i don't even know what that means as well but just being mindful that time is going fucking fast yeah i mean certainly doesn't help right it doesn't hurt to to be conscious of your decisions oh yeah i mean like kevin bigger last episode he made that change what 30s 40s yeah decided to go yeah like bloomer yeah yeah exactly but then again this this the, the the thing i ponder on is like you know why do we have to you know let's say if we could study the lives of people you know Mm. We could understand the, the the wrong decisions they made in hindsight, right? And you could see the similar patterns in your own life mm. and redirect yourself based on what you've learned, right? Do you see what I mean? It's like it's like basically taking all the data, yeah, about people's lives and applying it to your life and saying, okay, if I continue on this path, I'll mm. turn out to be like this. Sure, and there's like examples of it. Exactly. I read that somewhere. I don't know where, but it's like live your life, life as if in this situation, this is your second attempt at it, and now you're gonna make the right exactly, call. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know where I got that from. Yeah. But I read it somewhere. <laughs> but it's like it's like the old sayings, like 
you know, um, a per, like a, a fool learns from his own mistake. A wise person learns from mm. other people's mistake. Sure, yeah. At the end of the day, like time is scarce, and like if you make the same mistakes and same things that you could have potentially avoided, yeah, could you have not saved yourself that time, saved yourself that hassle? Mm. That so that's what I always ponder on. You know, how can you potentially learn from someone who's on the same path as you? And accelerate the growth, accelerate the process of where you want to go. Not to say you won't make the mistake. Not to say you mm. won't need to learn from your mo- own mistakes. I to think definitely you will. But it's just the idea of maybe learning from someone that has been on that path, right? And he has laid down the sort of rules of the game, mm. the foundations. The foundations, of yeah. I think that's important. Like, sure. like, I always think about that concept. I'm like, fuck, like. Damn, like, why are more people like talking about this shit? Mm. I mm. guess, yeah, there's there's no like rule book to success, no defined path, but from taking the looking back on the past of others, you can kind of see how that relates to you and your position. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, success is a very heavy word, I found. Sure, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a subjective, fucking right? heavy word, yeah. Yeah. Like, I used to say it all the time, but now I don't hardly say it. Right. Like, you know, because it's so relative to yeah. whoever you are and which stage you are in life. Your context and everything. Yeah, yeah. like success is. It's like, it's like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, sure. you know what I mean? Because you could be a success in business, like have a profitable thing, yeah. but then your home life can be a wreck. Exactly. Are you successful? Yeah. See, I'm not sure. I I I actually have to ponder on that question myself. Like, choose it. I don't even know. You know, specifically and clearly, like, what does that mean for me? Like, you know, sure, yeah. it's a hard thing to understand because that's like sort of your compass, really. When you can define mm. what success is to you, like, clearly define it, crystal clear, then you can really understand. Okay, is Reversing. this decision, yeah, getting me to that outcome? Sure, yeah. I think, like, potentially, most people don't do that. Most people do not understand what is it that for them mm. makes a good life. Let's forget about success, the good life. Right. You know, how can one live the good life? And that's a hard thing to to potentially tackle because good life varies person to person. Mm. Like I met someone, you know, recently, you know, the good life for him was to feed his family. Sure. Know, make enough money, take care of his family. That was a good life. Fulfilled, right? Yeah. yeah. And I met another guy. He's an ultra successful dude, like, you know, business wise. Yeah. His his uh, good life was to do well in business. Right. You know, two different guys, same one in the good life, two different paths. Yeah, two different outcomes. Yeah. But at the end of the day, both happy, right? Because that's probably, yeah. the end of the day, is just being happy with where yeah. you're at. And then again, I struggle with that concept as well. I struggle with the whole idea of, you know, chasing happiness per se. Mm, might be counterproductive if you're chasing after it. Yeah. You might never reach it, but it could just happen. Yeah, and then like, we've got to ask the question again, which is like so, you know, you've got to go in a circle, like what is like your definition of happiness? And then again, you've got to ask the question of like, okay, if I'm constantly chasing happiness, would I, you know, tra- you, would I, you know, run away from struggle? Yeah, and are you shooting yeah. yourself in the foot by chasing after happiness? I mean, you're not happy, it's even more of a burden because you're like, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think like, I don't know. It's like it's a hard concept. Like I, I haven't got my my head around it as well, because you know, I think the struggle, like you know, the happiness and struggle, are so so interrelated. Mm. In terms of like, I think struggling for something you really want is a happy process. Yeah, once you're there. Yeah. Because you think see the, people who've just been given stuff their whole life, they're not happy. They've got everything. Yeah. But struggle, like, is I think that's a that's like, whoever's struggling, like, in in whatever context is struggling, there's a lot of positives in it. Like, you know, maybe we haven't lived the struggle that kids in Syria or kids in Africa have lived. Yeah. But each struggle is different. Each struggle is in its different context, different sort of, uh, you know, growth factors, all that stuff. So I'm like, you know, like, how do we define struggle and how do we navigate struggle? 
Mm. Like for me, that's like like once you understand like okay, what are the things I need to struggle to get past to get to, let's say, the good life. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and I guess you could take that down to like a basic example of the gym. You've got to struggle mm. at the gym to get your outcome to get fit. Yeah. Have you read uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck? No, not yet. Yeah, this guy talks about like the the idea of choosing your struggle. Right. Choosing your problems, like we can't not have problems, and life mm. pro- life is like full of problems, but we can choose our problems. What those problems? Yeah. Are. And I was like, fuck, man, that's a that's a neat concept in itself. Like, yeah, you won't ever go without problems. Like there'll always be problems and struggle, but you can potentially choose the problems you have. Yeah, I guess in some regards, some maybe not, right? Context is yeah. yeah. Like you can like. Especially when we're living in the first world country, you know, we have that that choice. Different contexts, different countries, maybe, but like we can, you know, choose the struggle of starting a business or not. Sure. That's yeah. the problem. Like when we sign up to start a business, we're signing up to all for the struggles. Oh yeah. 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 Totally. And that's like, I don't know. Thinking of it in that context is like, ooh, man, like. Makes you like boom, like you're like oh, yeah. okay. Like signing up for uni, you yeah. know there's gonna be struggle. Yeah. And passing. Yeah. I think just being conscious of that, very conscious of that, and accepting it early on mm. before you start the journey. Like I'm going to university now, like soon. I haven't started yet. Yeah. But I consciously made the decision that there'll be like I, I'm gonna suck at some shit. You know, but I I know it like, but I want to get through it. Like I'm yeah. making a conscious decision that. I may suck through it, but I'm going to still go Get through, through that death. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is another good book as well. Yeah. Definitely short, recommend Short it. and easy read. Yeah. But, yeah, this is the this has been the, the podcast for the last uh, year. Yeah. Looking back, a reflection. Yeah. I think we have to do one every year. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah. It's been weird on this side of the camera, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's good, my friend. Yeah, man, like, I'm, I'm keen as to continue it. And thank you guys if you have ever tuned in, listened, spread the word, fam. And, yeah, I'll see you guys on the, oh, the other side of the world. Yeah, whole new sure. context. Over and out. <laughs>